welcome to the EEPROM 9. Now as being, it's being requested by Mr VX is he wants to learn how to debug stuff. So in this example we are using my classically, some people know about, dead electron. For debugging. I've debugged this already so I know what's dead. That. But essentially we're going to debug it and get some readouts on the scope here. And show you how to connect probes and measure and the sort of stuff to look for. So the first thing we should probably check is the crystal osculator. Now first of all, before you connect the negative rail, which is the middle pin of this power connector, you'll want to disconnect the power because it's easy to short them out. So connect in such a way. And try and make sure it stays steady because when it shorts out the power, this board will cut out for a set amount of time. So this Pro connects to the negative, which is the middle, or the zero volts, keep that in mind. Then you can connect this this one, which is one of these pins, but also dominantly has this. But this is the probe you really want. The other ends are a bit useless. But you just hook that around the pin of the crystal oscillator and voila. Now this is a 16 megahertz one, so we're going to get more than really what my scope can handle. So that's not shorting. So now we power it on. And instantly you will notice there's a change in the scope. Now it says on this for the oscillator we're looking at 4 volt peak. So we haven't exactly got that. He's reaching ULA pin 49. Well, we're not going to look at the ULA. Not do, 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 check pin 8. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have. So we've got this on 2 volts per division. So we haven't exactly got a 5 volt, but we do have that. Now we adjust it to a more suitable frequency range. And we also want it larger, so we want to decrease the volts per division. And this is where your AC-DC comes in. Knock into AC mode, you can see exactly on the scope that we have a signal. So the oscillator is working. This says connect it to pin IC. Now the way to cap do IC standard dip packages like that is you start you have the little notch here and you always start on its left when the notch is looking forward and you're sitting at the back of it like you're staring at the chip's arse basically and you just count from one two three four go round to the bottom of the chip loop round and count up from there five six seven eight and this will have 40 pins. I know these chips off by heart and pin counts. These are 16 pins, I think. I can't remember. Something like that. So that means we have the oscillators working. You can also go to pin 49 of the ULA, but that's really difficult to trade. Next thing is, is it says go to ULA. Da -da -da -da, we're skip. Da -da -da, square metal, usual crap. Uh, so now what we want to do is pin 943 ground circuit 60 should be very much check the line ROM line pin 61 is wobbling so that'll be that it doesn't label it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six. oh that'll be from that won't it Oh, I don't fancy counting up to 61. <laughs> DRAMs, you can also check DRAMs, pin 50. DRAMs, ROM, pin 14, ground, pin 28, 5 volt, check the output. If the enable pin 22 is wobbling and not fixed at one logic level. And also the address lines. I don't know the address lines. So we're going to go to pin 22. So we'll be counting this chip. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. That is this pin here. Now for this, I've shorted out the scope, haven't I? No. God, I'm going to. I should have turned it off first. Naughty, naughty. Look. Turn it off so not to blow it up. This is pin 22 here. We want to wrap that round there. Not going to have it. So this is... When we do this... Connect that back up to the negative, that's disconnected. Pop off that end. And then, we, with the spike, we tap the pin. But we don't put it on any other pin. Or, or put it between pins because we kill it. Now this, all we need to do, that, and we can see, knock it up to, DC, so I just want to check that is in line. It's not. There we go. So we've got two volts per division, we've got a total of four volts going positive. So that pin 22 of the ROM is wobbling as they suggest it is, which means the ROM is doing as it should, and the address lines, which will be whatever. Um, it doesn't tell you the address lines to check and I don't have a data sheet of it or otherwise I'd show you then. Uh, pin 14 is ground, so we don't want to tap pin 14. Da -da -da -da. And also the address line for so DRAM should be um, 16 ground, check the pin 4 and pin 15 are wobbling so the rams we want to look at pin 4 and 15 to check that we've essentially got a signal similar to that so 4 and 15 so 1 2 3 4 oh whoops careful measuring chips like I'm not being and once again oh for fuck's sake hold it bloody steady you can see that we have an oscillation. Sorry for lights, a bit crap. Now remember, this must always be connected to the negative, and this is going to essentially the positive or signal pins, we just call them, for ease of use. Because if we start finding negative and positive, we'll start getting people confused because it that isn't necessarily generically handled that way all the time. So we check pin four of all four RAM chips, and you can see every time I connect it. It's working. Now I want to check 15. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Hang on. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, 15. I've made a mistake somewhere. Pin 4. Pin 15. What? I'm looking at the wrong chips. That'd be why. 4. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, that's these ones, so. That is also wobbling, as you can see, the scope's at its max resolution, you can also see the retrace lines on the scope, that's not important. So they're doing what they should be, on that chip as well. Oh, look, that one's changing dynamically, which is showing a sign it's doing a little more than average. Whereas that one's static, that one's now static, but it is changing. It'd be quite good to have a digital scope to see some tracing. You also notice that the actual signals vary between the two chips. <laughs> Fascinating. What we'll do on this one. This one's varying, unlike the first one. I may have killed the first one, who knows. And this one's also varying. You got a bit flicker. This is essentially how you test and debug stuff. Having a service manual is very useful, but you can also do this from chips data sheets by looking up which ones data lines enables, clock circuits, because 
types of places you want to probe on a chip are things like the clock input, address lines if it's memory, um, what do they call some of the pins out here? Check the enable pins. Sometimes they need a stable logic level, sometimes they need an oscillating one. Um, CAS and RAS pins. No, that's something else. CAS pin 15. But things like address lines, clocks, that's the sort of stuff you want to probe. It is really quite simple once you know it it's just yeah as you say there's nothing really online that tells you how to do it and it really is that simple you want to check data lines clocks that kind of stuff on the chips and you just connect this to the negative and this to the area that you want to measure the signal on although connecting it to the negative will just result in a very stable line as there's no signal going between them two points. And it's really that simple to debug something. Having something like a service manual helps, but you can do it without if you research the data sheets of the chips and know exactly what each of the chips should be doing roughly, because there's often example circuits in there that give out various days from now. I don't fully understand data sheets, how they work myself. But that is generally how you debug something. Right, back to grainy, dark, dismal video. So that is generally how to debug something, but there are also a few things I'd like to highlight. Before we go into more things that can be debugged, I first want to cover a few things that were highlighted in my scope tutorial. The plus and minus, negative and positive, doesn't actually change. Let's put it on a constant signal so you can see it demonstrated. Doesn't actually change the negative and positive. What it does is it changes the trigger point, the point at which the scope will basically think of triggering as like a form of calibration where it aligns itself with the signal. Well, it essentially just changes whether it triggers on a positive signal or a negative signal or an on and off signal. And the variable changes the voltage, changes the rate at which it does the triggering. It's a trigger change -y thing. I've never found a use for it personally, but that's that. So for example, if we do it here, you'll notice that it does change. You also lose some of the trace lines, or they just move, basically. So you've got an interesting one, actually. That must be a data line. Yeah, they're definitely data lines. They vary between the chips. There we go. So we can find stuff through probing them. Now, probing doesn't just stick to chips. You can also do crystal oscillators as I've demonstrated here and connect up to the crystal oscillator circuit and thus we get a trace that I'm not going to increase but we can also do it of the video signal lines as I shall demonstrate here now this will not be a very easy to see signal this is where a digital scope is really required But we knock it up to a lower voltage, we knock AC DC on. Ah, but look at that. Analog scope. This is a PAL video signal that you're seeing here. Now, you should be able to roughly see how that goes. Let's zoom in for you. Now, let's show you it on the instruction manual. Very similar, isn't it? Not dead on, but that shows that the video circuit is also working. 
And that was an analog scope with no storage. Normally it's quite difficult to check signals like that. But that gives you an idea of some of the stuff you can test. You can test whether capacitors are oscillating, whether crystal oscillators are oscillating, whether chips are doing what they should be doing. Now we've linked it to the video of crystal oscillator, which we'll have to knock this up to full for. Now if we knock it onto DC. Now that is interesting. We can confirm that it's directly center by that. And the AC DC doesn't change. That is essentially producing a very high frequency reading the chip 17.7345 megahertz that particular signal and it's difficult to see on my scope because I think this is a max of 10 megahertz basically or 20 megahertz or something probably 10 it's a very rudimentary scope so it smells bad dust in the scope Blech. After that, it's been a while since I've had that. I've never had it produce a smell like that before. Now, see what I mean? It is bitter end of life, but I shall use it, continue to use it till it dies and fix it when it does die. But let's just think what other things can we cover to measure in the electron. We can even probe random pins. Now I'm not going to do the corners, but that's generally when the ne where the negative is, and I just shorted the power supply. But it's so now that now when you got your frequency too high, you want to play with this. Some stuff doesn't like to work, some stuff does. All depends on the circuit, really. Oh, what the hell. Some stuff will stick like that, others will oscillate. It depends on the circuit, really. And that pretty much covers basic debugging on a scope because it's not just chips, you also can check other areas of the circuit that should be oscillating. Now, as your own electrical engineering skills return, you will get better at judging these points. For example, we could measure the AC waveform from this, but in this case, we're not going to. Or should we? Hmm, I'm thinking about it. It might be worth doing, actually. So let's do it. Let's measure the AC waveform and show you an AC waveform. Oh, God, 50 hertz. Huh? LT with this. Off with this. Now this is where we go, so this is about, producing about 19 volts, we've got about 20 volts per division there, so we're looking, we're getting over 20. And then we just play with this, oh interesting, trigger. the trigger is not working very well on it, so it's not as a, you can see it's a signal with noise in when you look at that line, there's all kinds of things. So let's play with inverting the trigger. So there's how we have it. It's rather unstable because it's quite an unstable and noisy signal, even though it's going for a surge project protector. But it's safe to do it off this because this transformer is isolated from the mains or otherwise I'd have blown up my scope and probably myself. 
and this allows you to check whether you've got this allows you to check whether you've even getting a clean supply this can be used on supplies as well to check whether you're getting a clean wave for noise I would love to show you an example right now but I can't but basically if you you want any form of wibbles in a power supply to be down in these sorts of ranges if they're much above these they're interfere with your circuit and in that case add more capacitors so for example this was supposed to be a clean AC wave how would I clean this up to make it more clean I would add compa capacitors in parallel along it so it'd be one connected there, lead connected there, and one lead connected there and with big enough capacitors you'd eventually get a nice smooth waveform similar to what a function generator should produce but not my function generator because my function generator is dodgy and it's another thing on the fixed list so that is a tutorial on the basic use of a scope there is a lot more to it, to stuff you can do, but that passes the basic and that is pretty much the sort of stuff I have used my scope for. I've also used it in my VFD clock project. So, I have to say, thanks for watching and I hope this was useful to, to anyone else who, is, who has recently got a scope and pretty much wants to learn how to use it. That's the kind of stuff you can expect to see it from. Generally debugging work when building something, checking areas that should be doing stuff and if they are doing it, or repairing, making sure that the circuit is doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be oscillating a certain waveform, a square wave, because if you've got a sine wave where you should have a square wave, something's wrong. And a sine wave is like the sort of like the C. A square wave is du 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 du, and a triangle wave is du 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 zigzag. So triangle like a saw blade. A square wave, du, 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 your typical digital du, 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 like a skyline of a city. And sine wave like the waves in the sea. So I hope this was useful. And thanks for watching. Sorry about the crappy light levels, there's not much I can do.